Bangalore. That's a city where jobs have actually outpaced infrastructure development. In fact, Bangalore's infra wars began soon after the city started expanding following the information technology boom in 2000. State governing bodies woke up much later and are actually now a little busy putting up rail and road projects to speed up development. We take a closer look at the five critical infrastructure projects coming up in Bangalore and how they could change the face of the city. Despite the IT boom in Bangalore, the city's infrastructure has stayed several steps behind the growth. But things are expected to look up in the next few years with major infrastructure projects coming up across the city. Some of these include the Nama Metro project, the nice Bangalore Mysore corridor project, the elevated expressway to the international airport, the high speed rail link to the international airport and the monorail project. Analysts say these projects are critical for the city as the social and economic demands are evolving. The most awaited project under construction is the Bangalore Metro Rail project known locally as Nama Metro. Expected to connect different ends of the city, the 115 km project is chugging along slowly but surely. Currently only 6.7 km under the phase 1 of 42 km is operational. Phase 1 is expected to be complete by May 2014. Phase 2 scheduled to be completed by 2017 to 18. Besides the metro, the largest infrastructure project which has been in the making for nearly 16 years is the Bangalore Mysore Infrastructure Corridor, also called the Nice Road. Plagued by controversies mainly over land acquisition, the proposed 4 to 6 lane private toll expressway is spread over 164 kilometers. Currently, phase A of the project of 62 kilometers including the 56 kilometers of peripheral roads have been completed. No timeline has been given for the completion of phase B and C connecting Bangalore to Mysore. What's happening to Bangalore? Just visualize if our road was not there. We get about nearly 60,000 vehicles okay, per day. If that road was not built, the, all those vehicles would have gone through the city of Bangalore. As it is, it takes so long to go through the Bangalore city. Now, if our road was not there, Bangalore city would have been crippled. Connectivity to the airport located about 40 kilometers from the city has come as an afterthought to the city's planners. Two major road and rail projects are currently underway to reduce travel time. The road project is the elevated expressway being executed by the National Highways Authority of India. The six-lane elevated expressway to the airport is expected to be complete by 2013. It will be a series of seven flyovers from Hebal to the Trumpet Junction near the International Airport. The rail project is a high-speed rail link to the airport connecting MG Road to the Bangalore International Airport. No date of completion has been set for this project. Developers are already launching their projects in these areas to cash in on the demand once these projects get completed. Prices which were uh, hovering around 1,000-1,200 rupees about 10 years back same location today or the resale of those apartments are being done at 5000 rupees the row houses what we sold at around 2000 rupees a square feet these are being sold at around 10000 rupees plus a square feet and this is all happening in my view because the city has grown maximum uh, uh, towards the Devanali side especially in and around Hebel 5 kilometers radius Another key infrastructure project is the proposed monorail project expected to serve as a feeder network to the Bangalore Metro. The project is yet to kick off and get the final government clearance. Experts say traffic reduction will be the biggest benefit as a result of these projects. Today, if you really see that going even anywhere in the city, the traffic speed is not more than about 10 km per hour. And that is not uh, what any international norm. International norm says it should be about between 40 to 50 km per hour. If you see the cities like Hyderabad, where the new infrastructure is created, you have a huge mobility. To ensure better monitoring, the Karnataka government will soon bring out a legislation to govern infrastructure projects and facilitate more projects under the PPP model. Experts say the government needs to push these projects as priority to ensure Bangalore doesn't lose its edge as a global modern city. In Bangalore, Balakrishnan, NDTV, Profit. You know, the Planning Commission Deputy Chairman Montik Singh Aluwalia has even pulled up the Chief Minister DVS Gowda on Bangalore's crumbling infrastructure. Imagine a speed of 10 kilometers per hour in what's known as the IT capital of India. So what's going on? Uh, how is the 
private sector viewing Bangalore's infrastructure development. Ravi Ramu, managing partner, Primrose Resorts and Hotels. And of course, somebody who knows the city inside out joins us now. Ravi, uh, of course, we've tried to be balanced here, balanced here and saying that the government's finally woken up. But do you think they have or do you think the pace of development is still pathetically slow in Bangalore when it comes to infrastructure? Yeah, thanks for having me around and uh, yes, I am a Bangalorean, I was born here and uh, did my schooling here. So I've seen the woes grow as much as I've seen uh, Bangalore's business prosper and grow. Uh, I, I think uh, the, the infrastructure people, the government, whoever is responsible, you know, they're, they're in deep slumber. Their intentions, the inclination is there, but the time or the effort just isn't. And I think that's the gap we're really talking about. Let's take one example, the metro. I'm going to London for the Olympics tomorrow, I leave tomorrow, and I'm going to be tra traveling in the underground, the tube in London. When I went uh, for the first and only time in the uh, metro in Bangalore, I found it in comparison to be absolutely fantastic. Obviously, London is an old system, Bangalore is perhaps one of the best in the world. So we can do world class, we can be better than world class. The issue is we've got about six odd kilometers of the metro. We've been pottering around, messing up the roads for the last five, seven years, and it hasn't happened. But let's strike another chord on this. Once this metro comes up in the way it's envisaged, north, south, east, west, I think it's going to transform the people of Bangalore, the way they see the crisscrossing between various locations. E individually taken, you take the north or the east or the west or the south, uh, you know, you can travel within these areas. The whole problem, the crux to the answer of all this lies in getting us to go across various parts of town. The metro is a panacea, I believe. Roads are important. The nice road is nice, uh, full of litigation, but nice attempts have been made. Uh, but I think it's the metro which will be the panacea to all our evils, or let's hope so. All right, so Ravi, uh, that brings me to the second question. Yes, there's a bit of a frustration, but then everybody is putting their hopes on the metro. I've also read reports that there's a whole Japanese delegation which came to Bangalore and then looked at the infrastructure there, decided to move business to Chennai. Somewhere down the line, it has started already to hurt business in that city, hasn't it? Well, yes and no. You know, uh, let me stand up for Bangalore for once. You know, for the last 10 years, we've been hearing the IT uh, industry saying they are, they're going to vamoose from Bangalore and go to Hyderabad. Now it is Chennai. But please, let's look, look at the U.S. The Silicon Valley in the U.S. has, is and always will be in California. New York has tried, D.C. has tried, Chicago has tried, but it will be in the, the, the California area and that's the Silicon Valley and India Silicon Valley now the world Silicon Valley will always be Bangalore we'll lose the odd one the uh, odd uh, two or three will also come here and uh, that's a steady flow that's a fact of life Chennai has better infrastructure so does Hyderabad how do we catch up I think uh, we when you play catch up over five or ten years it's very simple you've got to have a big bang the big bang in this case is the metro. Uh, of course, the flyovers have to come. It takes yonks to come up uh, and, and build and commission a flyover. But when it gets done, it's pretty good. So let's give credit uh, and the devil its due. Uh, the issue is there have been too many chief ministers in too short a time, continuity of planning. We've got things on paper very well done. The CDP, the, the development program which came out in 2007, is great on paper. We just need some lovely implementers. We need people who can crack the whip and get it done. But I think we are moving in the right direction. I think Bangalore is uh, indeed an elephant like India. It's uh, sure taking the right steps, but it will take time to get there. Hmm. Okay. I think, uh, Ravi, you're speaking like a true Bangalorean defending the city. But yes, it is a wonderful city. I must say that great people and, of course, the talented manpower which you need for IT industry. So, you've pointed out to a really important issue here, which is governance, uh, which comes from the political stability. So, here's my next question to you. Would you want a mayor or a commissioner for Bangalore rather than have... Uh, let's say, a loose state government which has so many other priorities than looking at Bangalore's development. Is that a model that any one of you has thought through? 
Yeah, I think that's a super point. I think uh, the, the, the whole problem lies in, in one person who's going to hold this whip and crack it. Uh, uh, why a mayor, why a corporator, why not a CEO? Bangalore is uh, the Silicon Valley. So let's coin a new phrase. Bangalore is full of corporate private enterprise. So a CEO for Bangalore, let's do a first in the world and come up, uh, give him or her all the power, uh, bring, bring everything uh, you know, into a vortex, which is the CEO. Let the CEO uh, liaise with the chief minister, the ruling party, and the not so uh, powerful ones and get things going. But let's pin blame if blame has to be pinned onto a constant body or a set of people. What happens is you cannot even pin responsibility, forget blame, because the target is always moving. The target, the government always keeps moving. So uh, everybody claims credit. They come into power and say they, they want to commission uh, you know, flyovers. And they do that, but they don't commission the next construction of uh, whatever, uh, an infrastructure project. I think that's where the whole problem lies. Uh, but, but I think we can get it right. Uh, we need to get it done sooner. Ravi Ramu, very, very interesting thought. Uh, we leave it at that. A CEO for Bangalore, why just a mayor and the first uh, anywhere in the world. Thanks very much for joining in. Extremely dispassionate views or I must say very passionate views from a Bangalore person. <laughs> just to add to that, in, in New York, the CEO of a company is the mayor of New York, See, Mr. Bloomberg. Bloomberg, yes. So it does it does help. I mean, when oh, you're yes. running a company, if you run a company you and you run, run a city. city exactly the same way, then you look at the p &L, yeah. you look at user charges, you just have the city's growth as your prime focus and it's good as, as your prime focus but uh, that's Bangalore for you. I'm going to move to another location and this time we joined by Chetan Dalvi on the phone line.